Yeah, Hammy? I heard a clock. Yeah, okay. Yeah, boys, it's his Hammy. We're going to get him off. Yeah. First thing on the tail is hamstring. How, how's his hamstring down the sheds? Yeah, I don't know, but when you got to come off for a Hammy, that's not a, that's not a great sign. So. Um, he's had a fair bit on his plate lately, so. Yeah, that's going to be a hard one to come back quickly. Taylan. Taylan? Yeah. Can you spell it? T A Y L A N. That's a surname? Oh, no, that's my first name. Yeah, and yeah. what was the surname? May. M A Y. Yeah. Left hand string was yeah. looking at? Yep. Uh, you've had an MR before. Whereabouts is it sort of giving you the most pain? Oh, like I think like up here, like, yeah, like through there, up there. You felt it when you were just running there? Yeah, I felt it when I went to go like stretch out for the ball. Yeah. And then just, I felt it pop, like yeah. a pop sort of thing. So it would have been a tough moment for Tiny to um, lead into, you know, that he had that scan ahead of him and that was just going to probably reveal what he kind of knew in his head, which was a high grade strain. That's all right, mate. Good luck with the rest of the, the final series. How's it go? Yeah, good. Can we get a photo? Yeah, of course. Overnight, the results from Taylor May's MRI scan have come in and they don't look good. So what happened to me, Greeny? Basically, your three big hamstring muscles, back yeah. of the leg. Yours is the outside one, which is the biceps femoris. So you imagine that's going from there, that's going from there, and you've basically torn the whole tendon just below from where it connects to the bone. The news of a grade three complete tear is hard to take. However, physio Pete Green hasn't lost all hope for Taylan's chances of returning this season. If we're going to stick to the textbook on how to, how to deal with that injury per se, he, he's not going to play again this year. But we don't like to ever look at things like that. We're always looking at what ifs, is there a possibility around that. From the conversations I had, particularly with Mount Sports Doc, they were really good and open-minded to the prospect of trying to keep, him, keep his dream alive. In essence, like your pain is going to be less because it's completely torn. If it was sort of like half torn or frayed, it might be giving heaps more pain and limitation now. Yeah. So the idea is we're going to give this a crack still because essentially you've got 60 or 70% of good quality muscle still working, all right? Yeah, I think positivity, uh, uh, you know, mental fortitude um, is super important for players, any player trying to overcome an injury. Um, and particularly important in this case where he's going to be working hard to get back in time. So I'm just doing um, like a bit of rehab here and there. Um, yeah, just everything, everything I can like, possibly do to try and get back up and doing. Yeah, I'm still positive obviously, but yeah, when they told me I was a bit down, but now like that my mindset's a bit right and uh, um, I reckon I can make it back. So. While Talon works hard to make a miracle recovery in time for the grand final, the team's full focus is on winning the preliminary final in two weeks time. Well the first thing is when you have a week off you can't lose so that's important. Um, we can get a lot, of, lot done in terms of preparation um, on the training paddock so yeah I feel this year we're going to be you know, going to that prelim final much fresher and fitter. With an extra week to prepare the coaches have organised a private wrestle training session with one of Australia's most experienced MMA trainers, Alex Prates, current head coach of USC champion Rob Whitaker. I do believe that no many teams train as hard as you guys did. So if it goes to a dog fight, nobody's going to beat us. We're going to be the last man standing. Okay, jog around, please. Let's go. What we try to do for the Panthers is nothing special. Just like sharpen up and, 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 and uh, polish a bit the tackling technique. More speed, Jerome, more speed, faster, faster. I've been coaching in the NRL for 11 years or 12 years, and I've never ever showed any, you know, like wrong or illegal technique, much the opposite. We always try to make sure that, you know, like we don't get a penalty, you know, like blowing against us or, you know, that, that put us in a bad situation. So it's just like perfect the technician, and make efficient make the energy saving, make safe. Good looking, man. Look where you put your head. They, they, they are born killers, man. That's how they are, you know, and you don't need to psych them up or tell them to be rough. If, if they were not rough or if they're not tough, they would not be playing in the NRL anyway. So, you know, I never do that. I never will. 
Yeah, it was a tough session. Um, usually we just do that in pre-season, but you get topped up. It feels like I just came out of the pool, but yeah, it was good fun. The upcoming grand final qualifier will take place at Sydney's largest sporting venue, Accor Stadium. In the last two seasons, the Panthers have played at Accor Stadium just once. So, the coaches have booked the venue to host their last training session of the week. But before that, the team begins the day across the road at the Ignite HQ Centre of Excellence, home of the New South Wales Blues. Gotta get a shot first, Steve. All good? Is that alright with you? Oh, what? Right, so this session is um, one we don't normally get, so we're getting it because we've got a week off. Alright, so the, the, the benefit, one is we come here, so we're playing at the same ground, sort of similar conditions. Alright. The other one is uh, we don't know our opponent yet, so it's all really about it. Us. The other part is that it's this is a part of this is actually getting um, uh, conditioned. All right. It's like when we wrestle. One thing Alex talks about is like having responsibility about it. Work hard, but not injure your mate. All right. So conscious of that. Everyone clear on that? <laughs> all right. Sweet. <laughs> Get him back. Get him back now. Throw my son over to me. Throw my son over to me. It wasn't me, lads. Oh, 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 what the heck, lad? With Taylor May injured, Ivan Cleary has decided to shift Brian Toto from the right wing to the left. It doesn't matter which side I play, and you know, I'm always trying to do my best for the team, and I'm always going to put the boys first, and you know whatever the boys need me to do, um, and you know, need me to be, you know I'll definitely be there for the boys and put my, my body on the line for them. Brian is experienced on both sides of the field, but has only played on the left two times for the Panthers this season. With the extra week to train, Ivan is confident Brian will have enough time to rebuild his combinations with star playmaker Jerome Luai. Time to work. Put him back to the left side, brother. I'm his pony, but. I'm down there. Good stuff. Lean on there, lad. Can't give those up. This is a pro. Um, you know, he's played in state of origin matches and. Um, I think throughout his career he's played a bit of both sides. Yeah, it was pretty cool for him to just switch back to the left side um, on short notice. The side is training strongly. The only thing the coaches have to worry about is injuries. And just 20 minutes into training, their fears are realised. Yeah, Appy's been, um, Appy's been managing a bit of sternum, sort of like sterno rib pain. Um, that he had from last week. Uh, and he's sort of taken a shot pretty early at training tonight, unfortunately, which has kind of rocked him and set him back a bit with confidence and pain. It's, really, it's going to be minimal contact, uh, I'd say, from here on in. Uh, Fizz out around the clock and, yeah, and, and then inject it differently or better for the game to take the pain away. Just as training begins to wrap up for the night, things go from bad to worse on the injury front. Uh, training had gone really well. Uh, the boys had got through seemingly, and then Kicks doing some um, some high speed stuff, skills based work, has pulled up really lame, grabbed the back of his leg, um, sort of upper hamstring, glute, um, and straight away everyone's heart sunk. With both Kikau and Coruscant departing the club at the end of the season, having to withdraw through injury is not the way either player wants to go. So we gave the the big fella a little bit of space just to sort of you know walk it off before we got into asking him what happened and, and assessing him. But yeah, very, very hairy at the time to see kick out, uh, basically hit the deck, grabbing the back of his leg. Uh, that's never a good look. That's five years in a row in the preliminary finals. That's a marvellous record from this great club. The Rabbitohs want revenge in next week's grand final rematch against the Panthers. South Sydney into a fifth straight preliminary final. The Panthers celebrate. They appear to have done it again. The men from down the foot of the mountain. 
hurts everyone. Absolutely. It was probably the intercept that was the difference between the two teams. There's a bit of unfinished business coming up against Penrith. Oh, we're, we're under no illusions that this is the this is the hardest task in the game at the moment, but we know we can do it as well. So we'll be going to the game, we'll be prepping well, we'll have a plan, um, and we'll step into the fight over the 80 minutes and we'll see where we land. Game week has arrived. To continue preparations, the coaches hold a private strategy meeting with the senior players. All right, boys, we've got uh, obviously the Rabbitohs. I think we know how they play and what we need to do. They will be confident. What do you feel like? What, what are your thoughts on the Rabbitohs? I feel like we've got, we've got the game that matches up well against them, but you just can't be giving them cheap penalties or dropping the ball back in the tackle on time. So I think if you do that with them, they play with the best attack in the comp. I think we're just saying simplicity is the key, um, particularly against like a team like South, but just doing a simple thing well, fundamentals and back in what we're, what we're good at. Yeah, obviously they're going to come out firing, you know, obviously coming back for revenge. They're probably the best attacking team in the competition when they're on song. They haven't won a game if they've scored less than 24 points. Right, so you can see how important defence is to beating them. Uh, probably the best, best I've seen on shape execution with Walker and Mitchell. So obviously it starts with Latrell at the back. He's, um, he's a game breaker. We have to save tries and scramble well as a team. Um, that's what big games are about. It's who can save them really, who can save the most tries and I'm going to have to do well there. I think we, we know what we need to do. It's just uh, now about preparing well and going out there and doing it. As preparations go to a new level, there are two key players missing from team training. So we had the two rehab boys, um, Tiny and Kicks, with their respective injuries in the gym on Monday. Um, obviously different injuries, but at similar points, um, we wanted them just showing us enough with some, some running prep, running mechanics on the spot, uh, and just getting moving and feeling good, looking good, and getting confidence for the next session. Just a little bit of niggle, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, good to get the week off last week. Yeah, get, get to my rehab, um, what I need to do with the physios and be sweet to go. In order for Viliami to play this weekend, the physio staff must first clear him to return to team training. We had the idea that um, he'd be good enough to go into some rehab running on Tuesday and then hopefully perform well enough that in the first 10 or 15 minutes we could then send him into some team stuff. But as he went through that, we, you know, we weren't concerned, but we just, just went off gut feel that we didn't think that he should go in today and, and open himself up to redoing it. However, the bonus was towards the end of the session, he was feeling that good and that confident that he did end up joining. Just a little bit of the opposed cycle stuff that they did and then did some little extras as well at the end. Back full training with the team, the physios have cleared Viliami to play. Super confident. He'll he'll be he'll be there 100 percent Taylor May has also made significant strides in his recovery. Having satisfied um, what we wanted out of him in the first stage of rehab, and, and that was all about you know doing his resilience program, which we organised um, in the physio room here three to four times a day. It, it was safe enough for him to go back to some running, which was all about just some long, slow jogging type stuff, working on his mechanics, and basically, yeah trying to do that with, with minimal symptoms. His left side replacement, Brian To'o, continues to work hard on both his attacking <laughs> and defensive combinations. Down, down there. Back to yourself, mate. Yeah, we wanted to make sure we got plenty of reps on the, on the left hand side. Uh, it's just a little bit different, it's obviously a different combination. Just got to uh, reconnect with that, um, that lineup and um, yeah, be ready to do my job again. Let's go, bro. As the door die final draws near, the pressure begins to mount. But for Jerome Luai, the game is not the only thing on his mind. I moved out of home last year, so I'm just living with my partner, uh, Bailey, at the moment. We've got two kids, um, Israel and Akira. Israel's four, my eldest son. Akira is about 10 months now, and she's due uh, this week or next week uh, with our third. So. I'm not sure about the timing, but uh, 
yeah, we'll see what, what happens uh, with the game this week. And um, yeah, fingers crossed we get the timing right, but we're excited for our third one to come. Team no sleep, brother. Yeah, the story was last year. Yeah, we sort of had Akira um, after winning the Premiership. So I always looked at her as like my lucky charm sort of thing. Um, and then, you know, obviously our third one was announced and my missus told me so. Hopefully that's a bit of a sign for us um, to win again this year. Um, but if we do, I'll probably have to have a kid every year to, to win a premiership. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited uh, for our third one. Do you have a name yet? Um, Halo. We've Halo. come up with Halo. So, H-A-L-O. Um, yeah, I'll try to get my missus to name the baby because I named our first two. But um, I was watching the Halo series, you know, the Master Chief, the Xbox game. Um, and I was like, oh, Halo's a pretty cool name. So. I'm not going to tell baby that's what she's named after, she asks. <laughs>
variation of like players, they've all got different strengths, tough, you know, resilient, courageous, all that sort of stuff, and they played well as a team. So that's sort of how the culture was built um, around trying to get to a team like, you know, if you look in the distance, what's the ideal team? Um, and we've actually got it, boys. It's a unique thing, boys. It's not, it doesn't, you know, come along in every team. It's very talented teams. We're going to play a really talented team tomorrow, all right? The, the game tomorrow night will start, like, there will be a real level of intensity tomorrow when it starts. Right? Both teams will be, you know, yes, we might be fresh over the week off, but they'll start just as hard with just as much um, intensity and motivation and all that stuff. There's going to be times tomorrow when we are going to have to, you know, face some adversity. Second half is our time doors tomorrow night as well. The second half, like this, that's when we really, we really count. The longer the game goes, the better we're going to be. All you have to do now is just get out there and compete. Right, the habits we have, the valuing teamwork and just being courageous will be enough. It'll be enough, boys. The biggest game of the year so far is here. The players begin the day with a team activity. In addition to the morale boost, this gives the players a short reprieve from the nerves of game day. What the hell? Time for preparation is over as the players take their places on the team bus. It's been a long day, but we're ready to rumble. A grand final rematch from a year ago. It's the moment that the players have been thinking about for two weeks. Now, there are no second chances. Uh, every game I feel nervous and excited at the same time, but yeah, uh, just having that mentality that uh, the work's been done and just being ready to pull it out on the field and uh, bring that A game. I'm usually just itching, like just looking at the clock, watching it like wind down, just get me out there kind of thing. Uh, when we got there, it was high focus, there wasn't a lot of chat, which means that there's probably some nerves there as well. Round would be 40,000 plus, heading towards 50,000, I'd reckon, for this game between South Sydney and Penrith. The winner gets to advance to the grand final. It's got two great teams. They've had a, a great rivalry over the past couple of seasons. Fourth finals meeting in three seasons. All those games decided by six points or less. So it's quite a rivalry. I'm a bit excited and nervous. There's not going to be much in it. Yeah, it's going to be close. It's going to be close. Yeah. I'm feeling like a little bit nervous because the Wabbitohs are really good too. But I think the Panthers will get through it. It's going to be tough, but um, yeah, Souths, Souths are on the roll. Um, they're on the upward trajectory at the moment at the right time, Souths. This is very personal between these two teams. They'd want to get revenge, and they seem pretty focused. I've spoken to a few players inside the camp. They want to get one back this week. Can we see them possibly doing it? They can sort of pull them down to that dogfight, and we don't know what we're going to get. Go Panthers! I think they're going to miss uh, Talamay out there tonight. That's where I think that Souths uh, will have an advantage in, in when you're comparing the two wingers. Interesting, Charlie Staines has come in, but they say he's going to move on to the right and toddle back to the left. Comfortable with that? I don't know. I've got a little bit of a, a, a weird feeling about tonight's game with South Sydney sort of just flying on the radar. Everyone's talking about Penrith. I'm expecting the uh, fireworks tonight, but I can't wait for this one. It should be a cracking game. Shape is identify the shape and stick to our principles, boys. 
stick to your principles, trust, trust the system, trust your team. Don't um, disrespect any carry. As the game goes on, our spawners will start working together. Make sure you work together, boys. Patience and execution down there, more Is they going to be going fast too? Right? Last one, least, boys. It's going to need courage to learn boys, from all of us. Right? We've done the work all year. We've got the system. We've got the team. We've got the teamwork. We're going to need some courage, boys, physical and mental. Right. If things aren't going right, you've got to be able to stay in it. Next job. Right, if things are going well, we're not looking too far ahead, we're staying on, on, on track. You all good? I right. all believe in you, boys. Just go out there and play. Play our style. Understand the game. Win the physical battle first. Sorry? Sure. The players take one last moment to themselves as they await the bell. The sound that signals two minutes until kickoff. Both our wingers are wrapped. Actually, both edges were a couple of plan B, really good. So we lost a little bit of field position early, and, and, and our edges were under assault. Um, but we, yeah, we handled uh, we handled that early. Oh, Mitchell has smashed! Moses Leota. His head went flying backwards. He got buckled properly. I've never seen Latrell get bent like that. He's on his haunches now. Here we go. A Cleary hanger. It's up in the air forever. It bounces backwards. And Tungor's going to pinch it for Pedro. Oh. Tungor races down the touchline. Jerome Luai grabs Lachlan Ilias, denying him an opportunity to gather the ball. OK, it's going to be no try. All right, just... Keep them going, all right, we're starting to, starting to work our way into the match, all right? Uh, Genzi off, I'll give you a little uh, towel down and spray. This game was a bit different for me. Um, after the warm-up, I felt like my strapping was coming off for my shoulder. So I was just, you know, I looked to our physio Mitch and I was just like, bro, I need to go inside and, and re-strap my shoulder. So I pretty much missed the whole, like, maybe 10 to 20 minutes of the first half. Kick out up top, solid contact. Cook races from acting hard. Away to Nichols, and he threw a pass, and it might be a try. It's Walker. The ball was tapped backwards by Penrith, and Walker on the spot to force it. Not a lot of continuity about this set for the Panthers. It'll go to Cleary, and he's going to send it through to Luai, who throws it on the boot. It's close to Butler's boot, and rolls over and touch and goal. Happy's going to be going soon. Now Cleary, an end over end kick for Tane Bill to the Fuse! Kick out! Oh! You got kick out. Billy Oh! Graham now, they are trying to inflict maximum damage without the ball here, Panthers. Nice. Shoulder charge, you're on the pause, there'll be a penalty. Walker into the line. 
Going away to Mitchell now, and a pass for Tass and Kenna. Richie Kenna's got another one for South Sydney. They're out to a 10 0 lead. Look, we're just gonna, yeah, it's a little bit of discipline. We're just losing the field position and battle a little bit. Through. It's just a slow process, all right? We've got to just keep grinding away. Just keep trying to win field position. Don't worry about the scoreboard. What a start by South Sydney. 12 0 would be massive here. Oh, the sweet striking Latrell has nailed it. Yeah, 12 0 down, and um, we weren't looking that good with the ball. A few worrying signs. So pretty much I was in the sheds getting strapped. I came out and it was 12 nil. And I was just like, what the heck just happened? And I just looked at my good mate, um, Scott Sorensen, and we just looked at each other in the eyes, like, got us just swing the momentum here and go on, and like, bring as much impact as we can. And Cleary, boom, it's up. Milne's the man, he dropped it. He dropped it. Kick out, pick it up. <laughs> Luai trying to find someone. He floats a pass out wide. under review for a, a potential obstruction, whether he runs behind the man and kicks the ball. It's kind of one of those games where they just kept going in the bunker and you just, yeah, I, I saw the incident and I thought, mm, we kind of discussed it about obstruction and it was like, there's no way that's obstruction, but. Rome Luai runs around James Fisher-Harris and then gains an advantage oh, no. by passing the ball to Charlie Stanis. under pressure that they have not withstood in a very long time. Well, they haven't been headed by this much and come back and won this year. Someone forgot to tell the Bunnies they had no chance against the Red Hot Panthers. The grand final for South looking a distinct possibility. James Fisher-Harris knocks the ball on. Everything that could go wrong for Penrith seems to be going wrong. It's losing little moments, eh? Mm. Got some good leapers this house team. Mitchell, he plays short. Isaac Tago's right arm contacts the ball, where it is then caught by Billy Army Kickout in an offside position. Tunnel denied. Staines denied. Kickout denied. And South Sydney are, are definitely on top. They've got Penrith's measure at the moment, and they are dominating this game, and they're up in Penrith's face. They don't know what to do. So. You don't see this much. They are on the back footy of the Panthers. They are rattled. Well, they're a little bit shell-shocked here at the moment, Panthers. They just look a little Stay bit off. rattled at the moment, don't they? Blue eye, and it's knocked oh. on. Oh. That was when I was worried. I was like, mm, I, you know, that's that's a bit of a sign that we, uh, we're we just not quite in sync. Just finding ourselves 12-0 down with like five, ten minutes to go, you know, um, you're sort of getting a bit nervous about, um, yeah, what the score's going to be or, or how we're going to come back. I felt like pretty much at that time, like, we have to score next. One-handed pass around the corner. Mitchell sent it out to Zatola, who knocked it on. And it goes left through Cleary and kick. Oh, he slipped over there, but he was hit hard by Kalama Matangi. He played that rapid. No one saw that coming. Go, Abby! Coruscant! Abby Coruscant slides over! Yes! He's there. Coruscant scores! They can't have a fourth one knocked back, can they? See if this ball gets down. Yeah, yeah. it's a try. It's a try. The ball touches the line. Yes! Yeah, huge moment. Wanted to get the next try, but to get one before half time. And even have enough time to think, yeah, we couldn't have another crack at him before half time. Cleary looked down his short side, so didn't like what he saw. Oh, Coruscant put it down here. It's like, oh man, well, that gives them a chance, the last chance. Here's Mitchell. And Graham. Oh, he juggled it! Toro's got her off the bounce! Go on, Graham. It's Toro against Walker and Cook coming! to pull something um, out of the out of the hat like that, uh, just a massive game changer. Yeah, it was a bit emotional too. I think when he scored, um, was on the bell and 
he knew straight away we were back in that game. So. That was a huge play, a huge shift in momentum, in mindset. Uh, I can only imagine how they felt. Yeah, we were feeling pretty good about ourselves going at half-time. That short pass is on solid uh, wide form. <laughs> when I catch it on that, at least turns right into me. So that's your hole there. All right. To think about it, expected to, expected them to come hard early. They had um, obviously a good start. They won the field position battle early based on a six again they got. I feel like we made a couple of really good reads. The ball's hit the ground a couple of times. We just got a try out there too, which is awesome. Um, that would put a massive dent in their confidence, boys. But we've got to step the stand again the second half. Second half was still the other day. This is our time. We've got to start really well. This time. Right. Keep working hard for each other. Work as a team. The biggest thing we've probably practiced since the moment we started this whole season was staying present. I know there's a lot on the line. Everyone knows what's on the line here, boys. But it's a long half, long half of footy. Stay present. We play one play at a time. Right. You got that? Go and enjoy yourself. One of these clubs. South Sydney or Penrith, it will be their final half of 2022. Who will go through to face Parramatta in the grand final? Charge down, kick out. Billy has got it back. Kick out's going to race away. Kick out against Mitchell Stepps. Chorus out. Away for Cleary. He kicks. He goes himself. He was taken out. Cleary. It'll be a try anyway. Spencer Lee you. Yes. Yeah, did my usual screaming celebrations. So obviously, no one knew like whether or not if I got the ball down. My dad is always like, oh, I know, I know it's a try when you're celebrating like that, and I'm just like, yeah, that's probably true. Because um, if I'm 50-50 if I score a try, I, I probably wouldn't celebrate because I'll look like an idiot if it, if it was a no try. So. Out the back to Mitchell. Now to Graham. That's a good tackle by Tungle. Elias's kick finds Edwards, and he just stepped in pointlessly. Edwards through. Edwards bursting clear. Edwards up near the halfway. That is a magnificent run. What a run. Critical defensive set here for South as Luo rolls it through. Tangor! Yeah! Yeah! What a power play by Penrith from one end to the other. Penrith has started the second half absolutely on fire. It's really hard to run down. It's been a remarkable turnaround. All of a sudden, South Sydney now with the wobbles. They led 12 nil. Yeah, the shell shock here, the rubber dose. I don't know if they can find another gear now. Mitchell now passes out to Kenner. Yeah, get out. Yes! He's defended well, Charlie Staines, all night. Oh, oh it's lean you. Nice. Straight yeah. over the top of them. It's not often that the front row is in open space, but um, yeah, it ended pretty quick. Uh, it's all good. Thanks, boys. Thanks, boys. Uh, you're all good, brother. Hey, Spenny. Spenny, Spenny, Spenny that's all good. Yeah, we're going to have a breather anyway. The game's they're playing the whistle, so... Yeah. Hey, we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna have to come for another check. Just trust me on this. That's all good. Hey, Spenny, 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 Spenny. In the replay, he was definitely uh, fired up and understandably, I think I was the guy to, to try to tell him to piss off and, and cool down. And Yeah, I'll, probably anyone would have been the same. You're all good. You're good. Hey, yeah. Yeah, well, the visual that everyone saw on TV or watching at the game um, probably gave away how intense that situation was. My initial frustration at the time was, you know, we were up and, you know, just the thought of me missing out in the grand final through someone else's actions was, um, you know, pretty frustrating for me. You know, he was rightly really annoyed and frustrated and emotional about the fact he may miss the grand final. <laughs> I am going to do all the talking, we're not going to say anything. Direct contact, swinging, you're off. Okay. Once that happened, I was like, yeah, feeling pretty good about this game now, you know, we uh, should be able to like, yeah, bring this one home, and that's what we did. And they will be fighting with all they have next Sunday. Cleary! What a way to seal it! The Golden Boy and the Golden West. The Panthers rejoice. They're through to the decider again. And we're eight days out from what promises to be one of the most...
most memorable grand finals for many years. Was it a pretty start? Yeah, but the boys hung in there. We had to dug deep. Big games, defends wins big games. One more week to go, let's go baby. Oi, one more to go. Job's not done, hey, let's go. Just blessed and grateful uh, to have this opportunity again, but um, yeah, I think the main thing is the job's not done, so yeah, we're pretty keen. We're definitely going to bring that dogfight and yeah, let's get it. The victory over the Rabbitohs sees the Panthers progress to their third straight grand final appearance. First, I just want to congratulate you guys in particular, everyone, our staff, reaching another grand final. Uh, third in the race, so we're right in the, right in the frame to be yeah, the most successful uh, team in the modern era, boys. If I could have, if I could have ordered a win, it would be a like that. 12 nil down, everything going against us, and then come over the top, scoring 32 unanswered points in probably like 45 minutes. Real credit to you. Um, unbelievable effort. I've hung in there and um, it's fantastic. No one really ever appointed me the job um, for the team song. I think Biz had done it 2020 and then he was injured and so I just yeah, sort of threw myself in there and um, I think it just stuck with me and my personality and, and what I brought to the team which was energy um, off the field and yeah I think the water is a big part of it as well. Um, all the boys have like two, three, four water, water bottles in their hand. I know people will probably um, yeah, hate us for that because we're wasting water in that but yeah we just uh, love our team, love the environment and um, we've, yeah, we've had a lot of practice with the team song these last four weeks, so I think we're pretty good at it. Penrith and Parramatta flags are flying across Western Sydney. So it'll be a battle of the West Grand Final. What a week. Parramatta Penrith. Two powerhouse sides in an ultimate battle of the West. The hatred between Penrith and Parramatta goes back decades and it will be on full display next Sunday night right here. I feel like I've got a team that matches up well in this kind of, um, in this month of footy. Uh, they've got a big forward pack obviously um, and, and they're a really good front running team and they've got all the momentum and they, they do that really well. So look, look, I'm sure they'll be looking to do that this weekend and be up to us to obviously nullify that and come over to them. We, we just got to believe in what we want to do as a team and as a squad and uh, the whole squad's got us here, the whole coaching staff's got us here and um, we've got one job to do. You know, we've got to get back home and start worrying about next week. You can go all the way though, can't you? Why do you think you can go all the way? 